All right, it's been two weeks since the raising of the Little Lights project. And before we, before the plasters cover all the walls up and we get more flooring on, I thought I'd give an update and actually talk about all the different members of a, of a traditional Japanese home. go through and I'll point out all the different pieces and how they how they all go together. So we'll start down here at the foundation level. So first of all, the whole structure rests on these stones which are called soseki. Um, and traditionally they'd be river stones with sort of smooth tops. And we use these heavy ass pieces of granite, which I hauled in one million degree heat with my boss. Um, they're epoxy down to the concrete foundation and that supports the whole structure. So if there's an earthquake, they, they just, the house just kind of shimmies. There's no anchor bolts or anything like that. Um, they've done pretty interesting tests with giant shake tables and uh, the house just kind of does a little dance and it doesn't fall down. Okay, so the bottom structure that holds together these uh, these columns, which we call Toshiboshira. Um, this whole thing is held together by Ashigatami, these pieces here. And those are joined to the columns with uh, splines on top of the um, on top of the floor structure, actually, you can see under here, there's these intermediate members, kind of like large joists. Those are called obiki. And those are supported by these little posts that you can see right there, um, called tsuka. And those are, uh, those are actually not even tenoned in to the obiki. They are, uh, there's just two nails holding them in place. Um, because they're, they really just support uh, the downward force. And if they were tenant in place, they, they could have a tendency to like push up the floor in the case of the, in an earthquake. Okay, so then on top of the floor, we have what are called the nada. And those are basically like what we would call joists in the US. Um, and we have some insulation here. Uh, they're a lot smaller than joists because they're supported at by the obiki and the ashigatami at uh, closer intervals. Um, and on top of that, we just have plywood because this is a commercial part of the building, so it's going to be um, covered with like a wash down floor. Uh, but you'll see upstairs and uh, in another room is quite nice flooring. All right, so then similar for the second floor from underneath, you have the same kind of arrangement. Um, these pieces right here connect the, uh, what is it called? Dozashi, which is the skirt that runs around the building. And you might think of these as like the obiki of the upper level, but they're called uh, Tama Tsunagi. Um, in, thi in this building, there, there is this sort of parallelogram connection. Uh, you might also use uh, sliding dovetails to draw the whole structure together. And then between the main columns, we have the, uh, these smaller posts, which are called Kuda Bashida. So you see up here how the splined connection connects the giant posts, whereas these are tenoned and they connect the dozashi. Uh, in a couple places in this building, we have these shear walls made out of tongue and groove with uh, Pe uh, pegs connecting them. Uh, it's just an aesthetically pleasing structural uh, member. Uh, and then between all the walls are these nuki, which are, uh, they provide lateral strength and also they support all the bamboo and structure for the plaster and they're held, held in by pegs. Um, really tightly in these mortises here. Since the raising, a lot of the work we've been doing is on the floor and on these sills 
for the windows and doors and stuff like that. So, so this is the Conway, and then this is the. Well, this is a window, so this is actually Magusa. Magusa. This is Madodai. Madodai. So this is the sill, and that's the groove where the the lintel, yeah. the lintel where the the window slides in. But the door is a similar situation where you have a grooved top piece called a kamoi and then a shiki at the bottom. And then over here, under here, which we can kind of see the very tip of it because it's covered up with this, this protective. This is called a, a, a kamachi, which is like a, a step up. Kama. Uh, this sort of the entry way room and uh, storage, space. storage space for the bread shop. Okay, let's go upstairs. So I am loving this bamboo lattice work. The plasters have started assembling this and you can see how it's tied in to the Nuki with this rope. And it just looks so cool. I mean, I would totally not even plaster some of these walls because it just, there's something about it that kind of makes it real airy, but you can really start to see how this, this building is taking shape. Okay, so up top, the roof structure is, has a lot of different pieces going on here. So this big piece coming across here, you'd call the, Tsunagi body, is that right? Tsunagi body. Tsunagi body. Uh, you see it's scarfed together. And that supports the roof structure on the uh, Ushi body. These large, huge timbers. And then there's similar, uh, these little guys, Koyatsuka, that supports this cross piece. Um, this this piece across here, tendon body. Um, so all this all this structure, this sort of stair step structure, ultimately supports these large, what we would call purlins, um, and they they all have their own names. So there's the one at the very edge, the uh, keta, which is like the the end rafter piece. Each one has what's called a uh, mendoita. It's a little piece of wood that keeps bugs and stuff from crawling up in the rafters and it looks good. These are all the rafters, which are called uh, taruki. Um, and then you have a series of different members that define the roof shadow lines and stuff like that. And, and they started tiling. The, I might be able to get a shot of the tile, which looks amazing. Okay, so there's, there's the Keta, and then these are called Moya, the interstitial purlins, and then at the very top there's the Munagi, which is the, the ridge beam. And then you saw in the last video, there's a special ceremony when we put that piece on. And then the rafters sit on those purlins, and that, then that supports the roof. So, so this roof has all these sort of layers of members that makes interesting shapes, I guess you could say. Uh, this, this end piece is called the Hafu. And then in here we have the Yodo and Urago. Um, now here's a good view of the lattice work. So there's quite a bit of terms and I'll probably make another video like this once more of the details start going in after the plasters are up and stuff like that. But you can see it's a great view out of this window. And upstairs is the residence part. So you have entry, uh, laundry, bathroom, bedrooms here, and the kitchen and general use space. This giant hole in the ground is actually gonna be covered uh, there's a massive oven that's going in here, uh, but until we get until we get the, there's a floor uh, piece going in here, 
we, uh, we're leaving it open. And uh, the flooring up here is actually upside down because we're putting in additional nata and then a floor on top so we can run the electrical and stuff like that. Okay, so that's all I have uh, for you this week. It's been a lot of work since the raising, but it's been really fun. And I'm learning a ton. So thanks for watching. Hi, if you liked this video, please let me know by clicking that thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel by clicking the red subscribe button. Please check the notes below the video for more ways to keep this channel going. Your support is greatly appreciated. And always, never stop building.